The Raptors, they led by 14, then they were down, then they were up 22, and then it was a close game, but ultimately, this team gets over the line despite the huge fourth quarter lead. It only ends as a three-point win, but a win is a win and a nice morale boost for the Raptors, who have now won back-to-back games. Let's break it down for you in tonight's post-game show. As a reminder, we do content like this for every Raptors game pretty much. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of that. And please make sure you drop a like as well to see to, to support the content. So Fred Van Vliet returns to the Scotiabank Arena. Got a very nice tribute video, but didn't play here as the Raptors hosted the Houston Rockets, who one week ago, this Houston Rockets team absolutely dumped the Raptors by, I think it was 29 points in the end, but the Raptors respond today. They were favored by two and a half. I thought that was a little bit of a weird line, but the Raptors win by three and cover the spread, though it really felt like they should have been a lot more comfortable here. The Raptors were up by 14 points at the end of the first quarter. Three minutes later, or four minutes later, they were losing, which is crazy. Then they went on a big run to end. The second quarter, they're up by 11 at the half, eventually took a 22-point lead, and I believe in the fourth quarter, it was 19 points in which they led. But the Rockets continued to claw back, continued to fight their way back into this game, got a bunch of shots to drop, stopped turning the ball over as much, and this became a real test for the Raptors in the end, but showed enough resiliency, put themselves in a good enough position that they were able to get over the line in the end. And, you know... We talk about in all these post-game shows, the win-loss stuff, how maybe that's not so important. Perhaps even losing games right now is better off for the Raptors, but I'm all in on development here, and this was a game where we saw a lot of good signs from some of the core pieces going forward for this team. I think that's what we can take away from the game here. It's the fourth game this week for the Raptors. It's the first night of a back-to-back. They're finally back at home here, and I think for starters watching this game, it was a lot, and it was a, it was a much easier watch for the Raptors today. Chemistry seemed to have been a little bit more there. Enjoyment seemed to have been a little bit there for the players, more so than it had been. And I think it's a testament to the end of the trade season here. NBA trade deadline was yesterday, and a bunch of guys in the lead-up to this game were wondering if they were going to be here today, if they were going to be playing in this game. But everybody here today knows that they're on this team They know they're going to be here for the rest of the season, so it's a lot easier to play with that sort of freedom. I think freedom is the best way to describe the Raptors and the way they played for the first three quarters. Made for an enjoyable watch. Like, even that Hornets game, they won in the end, but that was just such a a bad watch. A, A real choppy display here, but much better from the Raptors in this one. And they come through and get a very nice win here. Good morale-boosting victory for the Raptors, who now await for Kaliolinik and Oche Abaji to be playing in the next one. They were technically available for today's game, but it was communicated pre-game that they were not going to be playing for the Raptors. Uh, first night of it back-to-back for them, so the Raptors decided to save them for likely tomorrow's home game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. But of the players who did play the most impressive performance of the night, probably have to give it to R.J. Barrett, 8 of 12 from the field, 21 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds. And it'll be a really tight one with Emmanuel Quickly, who also had a great game here, 9 of 19 with 25 points, 4 of 9 shooting from 3, 4 rebounds, only the 2 assists. We're still seeing the... The development strides needed to be taken by Emmanuel quickly to really be a lead point guard, but the scoring touch was definitely back from today and much needed. Uh, A rare down game these days for Gary Trent Jr., who goes 2 of 8 from 3, 0 of 3 from 2, only 8 points for him. A really nice game from Jakob Pertl. Wow, great numbers in the end. 16 points, 11 rebounds, 3 steals, 2 assists, 6 blocks. Uh, I know there's 3 turnovers there, but he was a monster on defense. Scotty Barnes had uh, one of those nights where it was an effective game, yes, a positive game, yes, but just didn't have the scoring touch. Uh, We're definitely in the midst of a bit of a a regression from three. He goes 0 of 3 from the outside today, and he goes 4 of 16 from the field. Ugly day on the inside, just nothing was dropping for him, but still uh, had the aggression tonight. I mean, took 16 shots. He had that aggression tonight, was trying to make things happen from the scoring standpoint. But even when he wasn't, he made it happen in other ways. 
13 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, one turnover, which came very late on in the game. It almost was, almost was a very costly one, but only one turnover. Uh, yeah, eight assists, one turnover is fine. Like, there was still an effective game here by Scotty Barnes, even though he was minus two here. Uh, his role is ever changing after the trade deadline. His role is now back to what it was earlier on in the season, where he is, yeah, he starts for the Raptors, not at point guard, but then he gets subbed, subbed out early and comes back in and is the point guard for that second unit. So. Some down minutes came there. The bench wasn't at its best really today. Nawara didn't do anything. Uh, Jonte Porter, decent cameo, but it's it, a bit tough to use him defensively. Bruce Brown has a solid showing, 5 of 12, 11 points. Uh, doesn't seem phased at all by the fact that he almost got traded yesterday, but ended up not getting traded and is still here. And Grady Dick, nice to see more minutes. I, I still want to see a little bit more minutes out of him. He took five shots from three, made two of them, uh, and is just continuing to make the right decisions, hustling, working hard. That's what you want to see out of Grady Dick. For the Rockets, their starters got completely beat up here. It was really the bench that kept this team in the game. Aaron Holiday's minutes were big. Uh, Jeff Green's minutes were big. But the Raptors really got the better of Alper and Shen Goon tonight, who was so dominant a week ago. Jalen Green was very ineffective here. So, I mean, the Raptors... A lot, lot of positive stuff to take away from this game. Uh, it's kind of a shame that it didn't turn into the route that it was looking to be earlier on, but there's a lot of good stuff that the Raptors can definitely take away from this game and move on with going forward. Um, Development-wise, a solid game. Uh, offensively, things slowed down late with a 19-point fourth quarter. Raptors only go 43% from the field, 30% for three. The Rockets picked up big time in their field goal percentages, but uh, the Raptors' defense was the reason they win this game here. They forced 21 turnovers compared to committing 11. They score 29 points off of those turnovers compared to allowing 11 points off of their turnovers. Turnovers, excuse me. And, and that's really where the game is won. The Raptors were not likely the more talented team here on paper. I know they were favored. It doesn't really feel like that's the case, but they get the job done here. Uh, they use their strength to their advantage in some certain situations. Pretty good game planning out the gate by Darko Ryakovich. A, a real high quality defensive performance and Pirtle anchors this team and makes everybody's lives so much easier on the defensive end. And that is enough for the Raptors to go out and win this basketball game. So two wins in a row for the Raptors. Wondering if it can be a third win in a row, the legendary Dark Ryakovich pizza party on the cards, but the Cavs have won like 15 of their last 16. They are in tough tomorrow against the Cavaliers. Hopefully, Kelly Olynyk is playing and takes Jonte Porter out of rotation. Hopefully, Oche Baji is playing, takes Jordan Noir out of rotation. Then the nine-man rotation is kind of set there. See what they look like in a big test against the Cavs. Then a very winnable game next up at home against the Spurs. But after the six-game road trip, it's five straight home games, including tonight for the Raptors. Some not as difficult games in that stretch as well. They'll also have a, a bit of a break coming up after that Pacers game on Wednesday, which is the return of Pascal Siakam. Likely another tribute video there for Pascal as he makes his return to Toronto as Fred Van Vliet got tonight. And then the day, and then right after the All Star break, Raptors host the Brooklyn Nets on the Thursday. It is the return of Dennis Schroeder to Toronto and Shirley a tribute video is on the way for Dennis Schroeder as well to honor his amazing time with this team. So if you guys did enjoy what you saw from today, from today's post-game show or from the stream, make sure you do hit the like button to support the content. Subscribe for more content like this for every Raptors game. We'll be back for the next one. <laughs>